before we jump into this video, guys, I realize July is almost over. We have not done a Christmas in July sale. So, for the next 48 hours, Chris, what are we going to be doing? <laughs> I'm a Christmas tree. <laughs> okay, sorry. 20% off the entire website for the next 48 hours. Workfortapparel.com. There's a link down in the description. Let's roll this video. You smell that guys? Smells like time to spend some money. What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. I am freaking excited because we are going to be jumping back on the Rhino Ranch entrance project. If you have not been cued in on why we had to stop that project, um, go back like two videos and you will see the battle that we were in. However, you may be able to knock us down, but you cannot kill us. And we got a peacock creeping around this morning. We're driving down to the gate right now. Abel, Chava, and Jefe have arrived and we're gonna get some work done. Papi, que pasa, papi? Buenos dias. Para limpio todo. Este primero inside. Este, I see. Yo checo la, todas las formas, la forma está bueno. Todo de curva, está bien. Mm -hmm. La entro primero, and then we'll limpio todo este, the planters. Y... So obviously, first and foremost, out here, we gotta get all of this brush and weeds and crap that have kind of grown up. Number one, where the slab's gonna be. Number two, inside of where the curbing is. And then obviously, we wanna clear outside of this too, because the guys have to be able to walk and stuff when they're gonna be finishing the concrete. So the boys are jumping on right now, getting all of the brush cleared out of here. And they're actually making really great time at this. We'll have to get in here, clean out this entire planter, where my in and out trees are gonna go. I'm very excited. I might actually plant those trees prior to all of this getting finished. That way I can bring the mini X over here, dig my big old hole for my two trees. Look at this, y'all. It has not been long here. The boys have made absolute quick work and we've got our driveway pad back and ready to be poured. Now the good thing about all the brush that kind of grows out here, at least in the areas that you've like turned up and tilled up and then uh, the new stuff kind of grows out of that, is it really like once it's dead, it shovels out pretty easily. Chava's been in this section right here for maybe, I don't know, five minutes and he's got this entire section cleared. I mean, just look how beautiful the side is. You guys saw when we started like, I don't know, an hour ago, it's just completely overgrown and all super wooded. I mean, even right here where this planter was, look how good this looks. While well, the guys are down there kicking butt, getting that gate all nice and cleaned up, um, one of the other things I wanna try and knock out today is uh, trim a bunch of the trees along the driveway because they are growing pretty low and the lower the trees are to the ground, the higher the fire risk. So you can see like that booger right there, he, he's pretty low. I'd like to keep him trimmed up a little bit higher. Normally like the donkeys, they trim about where they can eat, which on our fruit trees is like the ideal height of cleanliness. Like you can see right there on that fruit tree, that's about five foot off the ground right there, which that's great. Got the Milwaukee uh, M18 uh, weed whacker, pole saw. It's got the quick lock system here where you can swap out the head. So we have pulled the weed whacker off. We've got the pole saw attachment on there. We're gonna do a quick change of the chain here because this one's pretty worn out. So we've got a freshie there, but I've also got a new tool here that I'm very excited about. And obviously we have not tried this yet. I own the M12 inflator, which basically it's used to fill up tires, balls, whatever you want to fill up. And while the M12 is great to keep in your car, it's pretty slow and you'll burn through a 12 volt battery pretty quickly just filling up one like, you know, man sized tire. If you got like a Honda Civic or something, you could probably do three to four tires on one battery. But things like these 35s, they were chewing through batteries. And of course, right after I uh, buy a tool from Milwaukee, they usually like put out something better. So we've got the 18 volt inflator here and uh, let's give this thing a shot right now. We'll fill up the tires on the single cab because we had to air them all down the day we went to go rescue the Amazon truck. And we should see if this thing fires up. She has been sitting for a while. Come on, baby, have enough battery to fire up. There we go. This truck has been old trusty, guys. So while the truck is warming up, let's open up the M18 inflator. This one, not quite as compact as the 12 volt. Technology, it waits for the pressure to stabilize checks the system pressure, fills until the target is reached, shuts off automatically. What more could you want? And they give you plenty of room here to fit one of the bigger like 12-0 batteries in there. We're just using a 5-0, so nothing crazy, but that'll be a good test for what most batteries people have lying around their house. So what's cool about these is you can set the PSI you want it to go to, and it automatically does it. It's cool, it's got memory on there. The 12 volt does not have memory. Looks like you got a pretty long hose on this too. We are at 20 PSI. Let's go to 45, see what happens. Now keep in mind with big tires like this, it's such a big volume of air you have to bring up to a certain PSI, but it's actually climbing pretty quick. We're now at 29. While we wait for that, let's get our chain swapped out here. Old worn out chain comes off. New freshy chain goes on. All right, we'll put our cover back on. 
and we are ready to go trim some trees. Let's see how our inflator is doing. Oh, we're almost there. We are at 42 PSI, and we have burned through one bar of battery on the 5.0. Alrighty, I'd say that took about two to three minutes to get up to PSI. Now, while they aren't the fastest things in the world, they are good to have. Okay, guys, we are on our last tire here. We'll see. So far, so good. We've only gone down one bar. Maybe we're at two now. Let's see. We'll see if this battery lasts and we get all the tires brought up about 10 PSI. There we go. She did it. 40 PSI. It took just about a whole 5.0 battery to do all four tires but that's a massive improvement over the M12. And if I actually had one of the high demand batteries, I'm sure we'd probably be at like two bars. But this thing is ideal here at the ranch where there's a chance you're gonna need to fill something up way far away from a compressor. Okay, let's break the single cap free of her spider webs that are anchoring her to the concrete because she has not moved in a while. Okay, let's see how many spiders we can knock on our heads here getting these trees cleaned up. So I'd like to take these up about to here. So another, you know, two feet or so. She'll give us plenty of ground clearance around them. Now, obviously you guys can see none of these trees are native. These were all planted here by, I believe the original owner, don't quote me on that. Um, this entire row of, I believe these are also olive trees. I'm not 100% sure, but this entire area was irrigated. You can see there's a lot of this tubing around. This was ran to every single tree that was planted on the property. You know I mean? I'm talking lots of trees planted out here so the original owner spent a ton of money on irrigating this place unfortunately over the years multiple owners have kind of ripped out the irrigation system by running tractors all around here but the good thing about these trees is they don't take a lot of water i guess once they're established because they've been thriving out here even though it is super dry in the summer times the animals are going to be super stoked they love to eat this stuff I'm no arborist, but I think uh, I think that looks a lot better, a lot cleaned up there. So we're just gonna go down the line here, and uh, you can see like that one, a big old dead limb fell off, so we gotta get that cleaned up. Uh, Papa Rhino just showed up, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna grab the excavator and I'll haul all this out of here for you. But I love this old pole saw here. Um, you know, I know she's not for like the commercial use world quite yet with this technology, but for anything around your house or even a farm or ranch, this thing does great. You know, I'm not even running a high demand battery in this, I'm running an XC battery. And we've still got two bars on there. All right, y'all. I was able to knock out all of these trees in about an hour, a little under an hour, I think. And what's crazy is uh, I actually had a couple of tree guys that were supposed to come out here, and they flaked on me. This would have been a cakewalk job for a tree guy to come out, not only to do these, but they got to do the big pine trees too. But I mean, if I can knock this out in an hour with an electric pole saw, like this, this would have been a good money maker for some tree guys. But one thing I've noticed nowadays is nobody keeps their word anymore. If somebody says they're gonna be there, they're not there. With zero notification, doesn't weigh on them. Like you have to keep constantly checking up on them. It drives me absolutely insane and I have zero patience for it anymore to where if you flake on me as a company um, one time at this point and there's no valid excuse, you're out. Like I'm moving on to the next company. I mean, I even had a pest control company that does like four of my neighbors scheduled to come out I set my entire day aside to meet them out here and then uh, nobody showed up. I call them and they're like, oh, somebody forgot to schedule a technician once they made your appointment. Like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Nope, on to the next one. Now, Papa Rhino's over there playing around in the excavator, but he'll get in here and grab all the cut limbs off the bottom, but look how much cleaner everything is looking going down the side here. The baby goats are super happy because, well, they get to munch on all these leaves. All the animals really seem to love these leaves. Now, this tree has got a big old widow maker on it. Bubs is clearly not afraid to stand underneath it, but you can see this branch broke off at some point in some storm. It's weirdly still growing halfway decent, but I'm gonna wait till we have the old excavator over here to grab this and yank this booger off. I don't want that thing coming down on me and, uh, you know, smooshing me. Now I trimmed all those trees and we burned through one like small 5.0 XC battery. Then we switched over to the high output 6.0 and we have three bars still left on this thing. Now look at just how clean it is up in here. And remember it used to all look like this. I mean, 10 times worse than this, all like overgrown like that. And then boom, it is nice and freaking clean. The guys absolutely rocked it out of the park and we're talking in a couple of hours, right back up to where we're ready to pour. I mean, we got to get a little bit more rebar here, finish tying off the rebar and then a little bit more cleaning up around the edges. We're gonna get all the forms cleaned up, but we are moving in the right direction. Happy to see this project starting back up. Papa Rhino's doing a good job there, getting all of the limbs that we cut off cleaned up and put into piles. Then he's pushing the pile to there, and then he's gonna end up pushing it 
way out there, which is where we took all of the limbs off of that big patch of trees down there that we trimmed. Uh oh guys, look like the donkey crew's over here, seeing what they can stir up and tear up. Come on guys, you guys should have cleared all this out. You know, you guys are supposed to be the ones eating all this. Okay, Papa Rhino is taking a break from the Mini X here. Let's jump in and do a little demolition. We've got a tree right here in front of me that totally just got killed in a storm. So we're gonna try and rip that stump out. I think this will come out pretty easy. And then we'll go get that Widowmaker that's hanging off the tree over there. It does feel good to be in the air conditioner though. Papa Rhino's got this blasting in here. All right, y'all, let's see if this old stump will come out. Oh, actually barely in the ground. Okay, well, that wasn't hard. We have made it over to the Widowmaker. Let's see if we can yank her down. It's still dangerous in the Mini X here, but if I can get a good grab on it, it won't exactly come smack us in the cab. There we go. Easy work right there. Easy work for the Mini X. Now, since I've gotten in the business of building trailers, AKA I've built one trailer in my life, I think I wanna build a trailer for the Mini X. And this might sound crazy, but I see a lot of them in Europe. So where basically, I hook a trailer up, put a ball right there on the backfill blade, and I'll be able to tow this trailer with me so I can basically stockpile stuff like all these tree trimmings that I'm having to just grab a handful of, like grab as much as I possibly can, I have to track all the way over to there. That's like my halfway point. I'll make the pile there. Then I gotta carry the pile all the way over there. Now imagine if I had a trailer that came with me and I could just grab it and just start stacking stuff in the trailer. Now even without a trailer, we can still manage to move quite a bit of brush here. This is like four trees worth of limbs cut off. I don't come down to this side of the property very often, but if you guys remember in the past videos when we cleared all the bottoms of these trees here, look at how that pile used to be about that high. And clearly it is all dried out and died. Now, once it starts to cool off and gets a little moisture out here, uh, I think we are gonna get a burn permit and we'll end up burning this entire pile. I mean, that's, it's pretty big. Man, am I thankful for an enclosed cab? Staying out of all of that dust. Now that we've got all the trees cleaned up going down the driveway, all of the grounds cleaned up over here, we're pretty much reorganizing all of our wood, our forms, our planks, our scaffolding. So we've taken a bunch of corral fencing here and we're basically using it to stack all the lumber, get it up off the ground. We wanna be more organized, we wanna get it all out of the way because once we get this pour done, we are then gonna be moving behind the walls, which will be this whole section right here. So the more we can get out of the way now, the less we gotta keep moving stuff as we go further on down the line. So the entire stack of lumber that has been sitting alongside the first port section shall be getting moved. And we already had all this kind of stacked halfway decent here to where it wasn't directly on the ground. Now this is about the extent of what we're gonna be getting done today. The guys are just gonna kind of finish up here doing a little bit of sprucing up. We'll jump back on tomorrow. Papa Rhino will still probably be floating around in the Mini X over there. So see you guys in the morning. Okay guys, well we are back today. I've got the crew cab OBS. We've got the trailer hooked up because I need to run into town and pick up the last bit of rebar that we need to get this mat tied. We got all the guys over here working. We're just bringing in some gravel to fill in all the low spots where the water tore up our grade. We had some stockpile gravel over there, so Abel is just getting in there and grading it out with gravel. Now, before we go see our friends over at RCP, I've decided to make a quick pit stop and see if we can find the In-N-Out palm trees that I want to put at the front entrance. I don't know if I'm going to go with the exact species that they use at In-N-Out, but let's see what they got here at the Moon Valley Nursery. Now, typically I like to support smaller businesses, but it's hard to find good-sized palm trees um, at a lot of the little smaller nurseries. So so these guys seem to have like the big monster stuff. I mean, what is this? A four foot box right here. Like these are, these are pretty big trees. Oh, it's on sale. I don't even want to know what the cost of these boogers are. Can't be cheap. Oh man, this stuff is expensive. Oh, you want 50 feet of hedges? Eh, quick, easy 20 grand. Okay, well, we have found the palm tree section here. We got queen palms. I see some king palms over there. I'm a king palm fan because they uh, they clean themselves. Queen palms, you have to get up there and you have to clean them and maintenance them. King palms, which are these boogers right here, they actually clean themselves. Now we're gonna need something bigger than this. This isn't gonna be tall enough to do what I want, I don't think. Unless the price is right, you know? But something tells me these boogers are not cheap. Okay guys, well, I wanted the king palms, but they talked me out of those. They said for the area that I'm living in, it gets too hot and it gets too cold, the king palms are gonna end up burning and you're not gonna be happy and you're gonna lose them and you're gonna spend all this money. So we've gone with some queen palms. Now those queen palms behind me right there at that size, they are about three grand a piece, which is freaking crazy to me. But to get the bigger stuff, which we need the bigger stuff um, because the way we're gonna cross them, 
if they're shorter when we cross them they're just going to immediately start growing straight up at that cross there's never going to be like a crossing away from each other and growing up because as soon as you plant them they're essentially going to want to start to turn and grow up the cool thing is the guy i'm dealing with here he's actually done the in and out tree cross before so he ended up taking me in the back and basically they kind of based it on like number one the size of the tree but also the size of the box the tree is in pricing wise so he's like hey we got some in the back that we haven't transferred yet so technically they're still cheaper do you want to go that route so he took me in the back we found two that i like queen palms that is and uh well they were still not cheap but i knew this endeavor here of getting my in and out palm trees was not going to be cheap so we're going to pull in we're going to get them loaded up oh -ho, check out our sick trailer we got showing up here Go down with the. Or should we slide it right now? Yes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, y'all. Well, we've got our new palm trees that are gonna be going in at the ranch. The first palm trees we were officially putting out there. And I'm so excited because I'm a lush tropical landscape kind of guy, not a pine tree, deserty, gravel, whatever we got going on out there right now. That ain't for me. We need to lush this place up. So these are gonna be rad to have out there. I'm excited. Hopefully. Uh, the strap job there suffices and these things don't go nowhere. Now my plan was to get rebar today. I don't know if that's gonna happen. I think I just wanna take these things straight home versus drive all around town to go pick up rebar. Okay, I decided screw it, we're going for it. Let's get us some rebar. So we're pulling up to RCP now and we'll be able to show you guys the completed project that we had done over here. If you guys remember, we were doing a bunch of their displays up front. So here's what they look like. If you guys remember, um, they wanted to sample a bunch of their new wall types as well as kind of show people what they can do in their backyard. So we've done a bunch of different types of keystone block work um, all kinds of cool stuff and this place turned out absolutely awesome it's cool to see how far things like this have come if you guys remember about about right here is where i uh, broke a water line now if you want to see some expensive block this stuff right here is so expensive because it's almost like a polished finish on it looks really cool you can see the bigger version right there but man is that stuff expensive It's gonna be fun. I don't want to unstrap this thing, but don't worry, guys. We got the best of the best. They don't make them like this anymore. Shorty. Shorty, want to back up? Because we can get it close to about there and then just put it right in between, right? Yeah. I'll back up. You're good right there. Leave it right there, let it hang, and then pull it with me. Right there should be good, Shorty. Right hey, yeah, you're not gonna, you're past the back. You wanna move all those? I don't think it's gonna hurt them. All right, careful. Get it, Shorty. Yeah, roll. The strongest guy in the yard right here. <laughs> Okay, well, we are fully loaded here, and our next trick is gonna be, uh, will the OBS make it out to the ranch? It is 90 something degrees today. We know this thing does not like pulling up long hills when it is super hot. Not like we've got the heaviest load in the world, but she is not light back there. Uh-oh, guys, this isn't looking good. We're coming up the steepest grade here, and we've got a slow septic truck. Let's see if we can overtake him. Hopefully no cars come. I know we're not supposed to pass here, but it's kind of our only shot to pass. Woo, we got past him, we got past him. I've got the heater cranking, it's a little hot in here. Our temps are just a little above normal right now, just a little bit, we're still looking okay. We still have a long ways to go. It's getting a little warmer. Well, the old girl did good, guys. She did not get too hot. Now we're all in the downhill portion to the ranch, so it's uh, easy cruising here. We made it to the ranch, I left the truck down by the gate. We've got Papa Rhino over here doing some 360s in the Mini X. I've got that Haro drag, which is like, that big chain link thing that you drag behind like a tractor or a golf cart or something and it kind of knocks a bunch of the weeds down well he loves to grab it with the excavator and just sit there and do 360s all throughout the yard i don't know how he does not get dizzy 
I would not last long trying to do that. We are gonna commandeer the Mini X here. You can see what Paul Verano's been doing. That's the Haro drag right there. I mean, it actually looks great. So let's take the Mini X down to the gate. Let's get us a hole dug. And let's get us some in and out palm trees planted. Planted right here is where the two trees are gonna be going. So I'm just gonna dig me a pretty good sized hole here. We're gonna use some of the dirt to backfill inside the guard shack there. Here's to hoping the ground is not too hard. But I bet it's gonna be pretty hard. And here's to trying to remember any pipes that we have in here. Man, is it nice having an excavator. It just makes jobs like this so easy. But I'm gonna transfer it to this wheelbarrow and then uh, Abel and them are gonna kind of take it in there and put it where they want it. Now I went ahead and over dug substantially there. Um, I know we are way too deep, so we're gonna mix up a bunch of this dirt with some of the planting mix and we'll throw that in at the bottom. We've got some soil conditioner we're gonna throw in at the bottom because everything out here is pretty hard and dry. And then uh, we'll bring it up to about the height that we want. Obviously you wanna over dig on the sides wider than what you need. And then we'll backfill around once we get these things planted. Now we gotta get our uh, tree stood up here. Let's do it. Not even thought. Let me see. Hey, otro guy acá. Ay, no, ahí no hace nada. Ahí no hace nada. Baja las bolsas. Bien. Now we're gonna chain up this bad boy. Um, I'm not really sure why we're doing it this way. Abel kind of wanted to do it this way, so Abel's got a lot more experience moving trees around than I do. I'm just gonna watch this one play out. Not saying it's not gonna work. Okay guys, I couldn't watch this anymore. But uh, I said no problem, no corte. Listo? Las tacos. This is kind of what I originally wanted to do here. This works a little better than chaining up the box. All right, we'll get her into place here. Ooh, almost lost her, guys. Almost lost her. Okay, now that we've got a pretty good idea of the height there that we want to be at, we're going to backfill now with some of the looser stuff. We're going to mix in some of the uh, planting mix there. Now we're going to try to place this in the hole. We've got the grade brought up over there. We've kind of kicked it at an angle. Muy cuidado porque ese mucho the uh, strap. Si, muy cuidado. Ve poquito más para mí, Abel. When we pull el otro, it's going to be caja y caja. Okay. Poquito más para acá, maybe ocho pulgadas. Checkle ahorita, maybe cuando ponle ahorita para allá está bien. So I totally forgot and I dug these to where they're going to line up perfectly, but obviously we need to offset them. That way the trunks don't hit each other and we can go just past. So I'm going to widen the hole out a little bit over here. We are now grabbing tree number two and this booger is significantly heavier than the other ones. We got her, but we barely got her. This booger is heavy. All right, guys, here goes nothing. This one makes me a little bit nervous. Wish I had a little bit better hold on her, but it is what it is. I don't think it's this muy abajo. Yeah. Now that they're both in the hole, we've got everything adjusted. We're going for the X here, so we're just kind of playing with it, standing back. We've got this one kicked over. We're going to lean this one down a little bit. Dame la papi. Es mucho heavy? No, tú, tú allí arriba y, y para que tú le pongas un, una vuelta allí. ¿Quieres mirar mucho más arriba? Sí. Mejor que voy abajo. Quita esto, quita esto, que si va a lastimar las manos. Está bien, está bien, está bien, está bien. Ok. Espérate. Quiere de cross aquí. Sí. Este es el centor, so I think it's más para mí. Sí. 
Yo tengo. Espérate, chécate. No, no, no manos. No mucho, muy bien. Oh, look at that, guys. We have finally got us the trees I've wanted to do since my last house. My in and out trees. They're not the exact species, I know. But look at that. I hope they continue to grow out this way a little bit before they turn up. But either way, I think it looks freaking cool. They are in the ground. We've got it braced up. We've got it tied up. We'll probably end up putting some more braces on it at some point here. We are now pulling off the box that goes around it. We'll break up the root ball a little bit and then we'll get her backfilled here. So we're getting all the dirt backfilled around, compacted as tightly as we can get it compacted here. Okay guys, they are in. We are back filled. We've got them nice and soaking in some water. We built a little well around them so that they kind of hold the water. That one's a little high out of the ground. He worries me a little bit, but the grade is gonna get brought up after this gets poured. These planters are gonna get brought up just a hair below the top of where the concrete's gonna be right there. So we should be pretty good and we should be nice and buried. Obviously putting them at this angle, like you're kind of fighting one side's gonna wanna be underground and one side's gonna wanna be out of the ground a little bit. So I think we got it pretty good here though. Um, one thing we like to do, and we should have put more of them in, but we didn't remember till the end, is we like to put some drain pipe down in and bury them with the trees. That way you got a way to just feed your hose in there and you're getting water directly down to the bottom instead of hoping that it saturates all the way down to the bottom. Like I said, we got a little ahead of ourselves here and we forgot we should have put um, one for each one, but we kind of put it in the center because this is by the time we remembered that was the only spot that was still open. But super excited to have these here. I'm excited just to see some landscaping up here. We are a long ways out from actually fully landscaping the front here. Uh, but again, I wanted to get these in before we have this next concrete pour done. And then we're having to like track over the edge of concrete and risking chipping or cracking the edge. It just wasn't worth it. We're gonna stay on them. We're gonna put a timer on these, get these bad boys um, on a nice watering schedule. I think it's gonna look cool, man. I, I love when a project gets to the point where you start putting plants in. I'm definitely no landscape designer. As you guys can see, I get my landscape design ideas from fast food chains, but uh, I think I, I think I do okay for myself. And I think that's gonna be a really cool touch that I have not seen on very many houses. I mean, I've never seen it on a house in person, but I'm sure I'm not the first guy that's done it. And with that, we're gonna wrap up as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, okay, a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.